Good evening. Counter-terrorism police in the Midlands are asking Muslim women to try to stop their relatives from getting involved in the conflict in Syria. Four people from Birmingham have already been arrested in connection with the civil war. Today's unprecedented appeal to mothers and sisters comes after a number of British nationals died fighting alongside rebels trying to overthrow the regime. In a moment, we'll be speaking to Tariq Jahan, who's been to Syria. But first, Gareth Owen reports on police concerns. For three years, Syria has been in turmoil. A violent uprising, violent suppression. But some of those fighting in this civil war are coming from communities like this here in Birmingham. As the conflict in Syria continues, more and more young people here and across the Midlands may feel the need to show their support. Some may be tempted to go out and fight in the country themselves, which is why the police have issued these leaflets, warning of the dangers. They're worried that these young British people may be putting their lives at risk, but also that they might be targeted for radicalisation by extremist groups. Less than a mile from this high street in Spark Hill, Three people were arrested on suspicion of involvement in the Syrian conflict. Police say it could just be the tip of the iceberg. But they're targeting their leaflets not on the young men they fear will head to the Middle East, but on women, on their mothers, sisters and wives. In, in Muslim families, the mothers are, are highly regarded, very well respected. And I think if they were to have that conversation about, well, actually, why are you going to Syria? You know, you could end up getting yourself killed or getting yourself into trouble or on the wrong side of the law when you get back. Uh, and I think they would be best placed to have that conversation. Al-Qaeda have a different agenda. Individuals may go out there with this really you know, glamorous intention around wanting to do their piece, but actually find themselves then embroiled in what is a very dangerous um, organisation with an Al-Qaeda narrative. Police say they want to avoid another case like Abdullah Deghaze from Brighton, killed in battle, just 18 years old. I said to them that, you know, while you're going, you can help from Britain, you can... Uh, Syria needs uh, medical help, but they wouldn't take it. So will the new approach from the police work? There were mixed views among the Muslim women we spoke to. Obviously if something's happening and if the police ask us to come forward, then of course I would, because like it doesn't matter what religion you're from and stuff, it, you know, you should still come forward. It's not just the role of the Muslim mothers for them to educate their children on this, it's a big role for the youth workers in the community and also the religious leaders. Whatever the views on the police tactics, there are fears that with the summer holidays approaching, more youngsters will have time to turn their attention to Syria. And if they do go, will they come back radicalised or as another tragic casualty? Gareth Owen, ITV News, Birmingham. Well, someone who knows all too well what the conditions in Syria are like is Tariq Jahan. Well, Tariq, whose son was killed during the riots in Birmingham nearly three years ago now, he recently took part in an aid mission to help refugees in Syria's civil war, and he joins us now in the studio. Good evening to you. Good evening. Just tell us a little bit about your experiences in Syria. Syria was an eye-opener. Um, there was a lot, of, a lot of things to see outside in Syria. Um, uh, and the main thing that I can... Um, relate to was, was the, the suffering of the children. Um, adults have a good way of coping with what they um, perceive to be de as death and, and destruction, but children don't. And um, to see the suffering and, and the turmoil in, in the eyes of the children really brought my heart. Um, I can relate to that being, having gone through the experience of, of losing my own son um, and putting my arm around some of the people that had lost their children uh, um, was, was, was very difficult. It's something that um, I'm trying to make people aware of in this country as to what is happening out in Syria. Um, it's not just the war, um, what we see the pictures on TV that we see the, 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 the bombing and the, and the soldiers fighting, but also the starvation, the way the regime is, is, is clamping down on certain areas and not letting food in. That was, um, that was something that really hit home to uh, and uh, now is something that I try and do to encourage others. To work in that. We, we understand your main concern is the humanitarian aspect, but what do you feel about the calls today for women to make people aware if they know of anyone going out there to fight? You know, obviously, I don't condone any violence, but um, mine's is it, it personally, from, from my own personal point of view, I, um, I think uh, mine is just a humanitarian issue. I want to try and get as much aid as we can possibly out there to help the people. It's not about the, the fighting. I don't, I don't 
condone that. I don't, um, I don't recommend that anyone takes part in that. But it's uh, everyone's own opinion on what they think. Um, really, it's just to, to save as many lives as possible. Um, so from what you saw when you were out there, is enough being done, particularly from countries like, like the UK? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think our governments are doing enough. That, that is the reason why people are, are, are so um, entrenched in, in trying to get over there themselves. There's a lot of convoys that go from here, and I know that the, the, the um, CTU and, uh, and the, um, the, the security side of it um, are trying to stop young men from going over. Um, I understand that, but you've got to look at it from, from um, uh, an emotional side where as you go over there, you see the suffering. Uh, and we see it here on a daily basis in the media. We see it every day. How do you, how do you then tell the people, no, that don't take part, don't try and help, don't try and stop you know, um, the violence? I, I really don't know any better. Well, Tariq, thank you very much for coming in and sharing your experiences with us. We have to leave it there, but thank you. Thank you. Tribute to